voice what you want to do because then they can help you get to where you want to go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to build your tech career and have fun along the way. I'm Liz and today I'm super excited to be bringing you a video on what options you have during the summer. Whether you're a working adult or you're in school, maybe you're in college or in high school, I'm going to give you a few options that either you already know about or you might not have thought of so that you can make your summer work for you. Thank you guys to everyone who's shown me support on my last few videos. Last week was my spring break so I took a little bit of time away from YouTube so that I could relax and get some homework done and I do have finals coming up in May so if you're in that crowd with me I'm cheering you on we can do this I just did a video on how to save your grade before final exams so you can definitely check that out if that applies to you but yeah I'm excited to talk about different options and with that let's get into the video One option you may be thinking about is should you get a job or internship for the summer? Now there's a lot of factors that goes into this. A, a big factor would be do you need to be making money? Do you need to financially support yourself? If you truly do, then a job or an internship is a great thing for you. Now if you don't have that, um, but you are looking for something rewarding, maybe you apply and you get a really good opportunity, whether that's an uh, opportunity in your major. Maybe you're in computer science and you get a software engineering internship. And if that's something you really want to do, you don't necessarily have to think about the money aspect if that's not something that's driving you, um, but you can think about the rewards that come with it. Maybe you're going to network. Maybe this you know, brings you into a good spot at that company if you want to work there again later. So that's one option for the summer, but I am going to talk about another option before I mention a few things, a few cons on getting a job or internship. Another option for your summer is to perform research at the school that you're attending. I didn't really know about this until my sophomore year of college, and that's when I had closer relationships with my advisors and professors in the mathematics and computer science department, and that's when I was able to find a research opportunity, work closely with professors, and that led into the summer. So I was able to, I think I got credit and I got a stipend, um, like I think I got like half a credit and then a stipend to do research and I was able to stay on campus for that as well so that kind of was an advantage to me at that time things were in person and so I worked with the professor in person and that was really rewarding for me so some research you can totally do remotely if that's what you're looking for but research with your school is a great thing to explore and if you're thinking to yourself I I don't know where to find that you can go on your school's website. They usually have a department specifically for research. You can get in touch with them and email them. You can also ask the professors in your classes, oh, hey, are you doing research right now? Are there any research projects out there? Or even if they don't have anything, you could say, hey, I, I'm really interested in doing research in whatever topic that interests you. Would you be able to work with me so we can do a project together? Because it helps a lot to just ask people and voice what you want to do because then they can help you get to where you want to go. And my experience with research was really positive. For me, I really liked that it was really flexible hours when it came to in-person or remote work. I did computer science work and math work, so most of my stuff was with a computer. I stayed, I actually stayed on campus and I had a roommate who was a biology researcher and so so she had a more strict schedule because she was doing labs and so she had to be in the lab titrating and um, she had to be there a certain amount of time to uh, record her different trials and everything and so her hours were different than mine so it definitely de depends what research you're trying to do but for me I really like that flexibility I felt like it wasn't as stressful as maybe a traditional internship or nine to five work life would be so for me I I did that the summer before junior year of college and it was the perfect fit for me. So I wanted to put that out there because 
uh, the job or internship thing may be hard for you to get if you're a freshman or sophomore. Now, my advice is not to, oh, okay, that's never going to happen. I'm not going to apply if I'm a freshman. I encourage you to apply because you're going to be way more prepared for when you're a junior or a senior and you're applying. And even if you get rejected all across the board, you can reach out to them and say, hey, was there something I could improve on? Was it my resume? Was it the interview? Was it, am I lacking courses? Am I lacking skills? and a lot of times they'll be able to tell you exactly what you need to know and then that'll put you ahead of the game in the next pool that you are applying for. So depending on the school you go to, they may be able to give you a stipend or a free room and board for the summer. So that was great for me because I wanted to be on campus that summer. Um, also a great thing is if your professor's working on a project and you're working with them and they have done other research projects, they probably know how to publish a paper and if they're working on a paper to be published and you could possibly be a co-author or a contributor to that paper that's a really important credential and to me I didn't realize how important that was until I applied to graduate programs and they asked me to list the published works that I had and um, so that was an interesting thing that um, was very specific. So it's a great opportunity for you to have a professional credential, even if it's not from an internship. So I highly encourage research because it won't be stressful. You, you don't necessarily have to interview to be able to be a research student over the summer. So it's a lot less stressful. And also you may be able to work on exactly the project you're interested in. So that's a win-win. Option number three is to take courses over the summer. So so this could apply to you if you're thinking, okay, I don't have a lot of pressure to be making a lot of money and therefore you don't have to spend 40 hours a week working, then if you want to take courses, this could benefit your GPA. A lot of times over the summer you can take I think one or two courses, but you're not taking as many courses as you would during the semester. So I found that doing classes over the summer is much more manageable and I often performed better. So those can help boost your GPA. It can also help you graduate sooner if that's important to you and even if you don't take a course through your school you can always check out online resources like Udemy or Coursera I also have a video on where to start learning how to code for a bunch of free resources if you're interested in learning how to code or taking any course really Skillshare is also a really good resource for exploring different things you want to learn so overall there's a lot of positives that can come from taking courses over the summer the next option I wanted to mention is the choose your own adventure option. Basically, do what you want with your summer. Now, this whole past year has been really hard on people in different ways, and it's absolutely okay if you need to use this summer to reset, recharge, focus on your mental health, your physical health, making sure that you can be the best version of yourself for the coming semester. So, especially if you're a student, if you're a freshman or a sophomore, and maybe you don't need to be making lots and lots of money, this is a great option because you can have the free time to work on things that you didn't do so well in in your last semester, or you could take up new hobbies, learn new skills. Maybe you're in one kind of major, but you want to explore something in a different major. You can absolutely take a course online or research something and find out if it interests you. Something that I want to do in my free time over the summer is work on <laughs> technical interview prep. So this is cracking the coding interview. I actually have a video on how to prepare for technical interviews and this is something I want to get better at because if I want to work for a bigger company like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, um, I'm going to have to do technical interviews and that's something I want to improve on. So choose your own adventure could be mental health, physical health, but also building your brain, reading. It can be doing whatever you need to do to make yourself the best version of yourself. So I wanted to put that in as an option because I don't want my viewers to think that they don't ever get to take a break or give themselves permission to reset and relax. Life is about balance, so you can't always be on top of everything all the time. Something that motivates me is to think of 
working super hard for the throughout the semester so then I do get to have a break when the semester's over. So it's all about balance and just because one summer you take to recharge and reset, another summer you could still have an internship, another summer you could do research. So there's lots of options and don't feel like you have to do one or the other. You have lots of time to think about this and it'll work out no matter what. The final option that I want to mention for how to spend your summer and the option that I will be taking is to do a combination of the other options. So maybe you're a student and you're able to do research and research isn't 50, 60 hours of work, maybe it's not 40 hours, maybe it's 25 to 30 hours of work a week. You can still have time to do things in your free time like prep for coding interviews, taking courses, maybe you want to be Microsoft Excel certified, maybe you want to have time to read a book or start a YouTube channel. Um, so you can combine those things, you can have time for self-care as well. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't go too into depth in the job or internship because depending on what that looks like, jobs and internships can take 40 hours, 50 hours of work time each week. And if you're a student and you're not used to that, uh, it may be different to adjust and have time for other things. So you may end up spending most of your time working on your job or internship, which is completely fine and that's gonna help your career 100%. Um, but that might not be the option that's right for you for this coming summer. It's not impossible to have a full-time job and do other things on that list and have hobbies and, and everything. Um, but yeah, it just depends. It's different for each person, for each job. So I hope that gives you some insights on what you can do with your summer as a undergraduate student, a graduate student, or a young working professional. So I hope that this video has been helpful. I am wishing you luck if you are studying for finals and if you're doing courses, we are gonna get through it together. It's gonna to be great. You can keep updated with me on my Instagram account, Liz underscore Victoria underscore YT, and my TikTok account. I love to post content for you guys. I'm so excited for this weekend, and then we are one step closer, one little step closer to being done with the semester, and then hopefully next year, maybe in-person classes. And speaking of things to look forward to, I just made a video discussing things I'm excited for for when the world is less sick and things can return to a new normal. So check that out. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you very soon.